Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. Three US chip design software giants were ordered to suspend supply to China overnight, and another shackle was put on the neck of China's semiconductor industry. On May 28, 2025, the Financial Times of the United Kingdom broke a news that shocked the global technology community. The US government has substantially cut off the channels for some US companies to sell semiconductor design software to China. People familiar with the matter revealed that the affected companies include Cadence, Synopsys and Siemens EDA, three electronic design automation, EDA, software giants. As soon as the news came out, the capital market reacted violently. Cadence's stock price plummeted 10.7% setting the largest single-day drop since the outbreak of the epidemic in March 2020. Synopsis also fell 9.6%. The Chinese business of these two companies accounts for 12% and 16% of their total revenue, respectively. The US Department of Commerce confirmed to CNN that day that it was reviewing strategic exports to China and had suspended existing export licenses or imposed additional licensing requirements during the review period. On the same day, the New York Times added that the United States also suspended exports of jet engine technology and some chemical sales to China. This is not the first time that the United States has taken action against China's semiconductor industry. In January 2025, the Bureau of Industry and Security, BIS, of the U.S. Department of Commerce issued new regulations to restrict the export of advanced process chips of 16 nanometers per 14 nanometers and below. Three months later, this regulation officially came into effect, and TSMC immediately suspended shipments to some Chinese chip design manufacturers that were not on the U.S. white list. The new regulations require that the packaging and testing of chips using 16 14 nanometer nodes and below advanced processes must be completed by 23 whitelist companies designated by the United States. An executive of a domestic mobile phone chip manufacturer admitted, the new regulations do have a little impact, but overall it's okay. The impact mainly comes from some chips that are packaged and tested in non-whitelist companies, and the follow-up is nothing more than adjusting the order ratio. The blockade measures are laid. In March 2025, the Office of the United States Trade Representative held a hearing on traditional semiconductors made in China, considering imposing more tariffs. The US government accused China of supporting local companies through government subsidies, tax exemptions, low-cost land, etc., and of squeezing foreign companies with policies and demanding technology transfer. Li Hua, a senior executive in the semiconductor equipment industry, said, it involves the entire semiconductor ecosystem at one time. In the past, the list added several or dozens of companies every year. This time the number is very large. The Chinese chip industry did not sit idly by. In December 2024, Facing a new round of U.S. regulation, the four major associations of China Internet Association, China Association of Automobile Manufacturers, China Communications Enterprise Association, and China Semiconductor Industry Association jointly issued a rare statement, suggesting that domestic companies should be cautious in purchasing American chips. This collective action sends a signal of group warmth and calls on the entire industry to be of one mind. Domestic substitution is accelerating. Innovant Biologics has fully switched its AI chip supply chain to domestic 14 nanometers process since 2020. At the end of 2023, the company released a new generation of AI chip DeepEdge 10, which uses an independent and controllable domestic process, contains a domestic RISC-V core, and uses a computing power building block architecture. In July 2024, Yunchen Lifei launched the IPU X6000 Accelerator card, which has a built-in Deep Edge 200 high computing chip based on Deep Edge 10. The product has 256T computing power and a single card, 
can achieve 130B parameter large model inference. Companies such as Cambrian and Haiguang Information are also making breakthroughs in the field of AI chips. The performance of Haiguang Information's CPU and DCU products has reached the level of mainstream high-end processors of the same type in the world. In terms of computing power, companies such as Inspur Information and Sugan have actively laid out. Sugan's overall intelligent computing solution has been implemented in Guangdong, Anhui, Zhejiang, Hubei and other places, and all important components of the innovative solution are self-developed. Mature processes have become a breakthrough for China's chip industry. According to Trendforce forecast, from 2023 to 2027, the global wafer foundry mature process and advanced process capacity ratio is expected to remain at 7 to 3. The automotive industry has a particularly strong demand for mature process chips. Each traditional fuel vehicle requires 600 to 700 chips, electric vehicles require 1,600 chips, and smart cars have as many as 3,000 chips. Xu De Kuan, president of Bosch China, once pointed out, foreign investment in chips with a process of 28 nanometers or above is insufficient. If chip manufacturers are willing to work hard, it will also leave opportunities for mainland China in this range. Domestic equipment has made progress in some areas. Huatai Securities report shows that the localization rate of semiconductor process equipment, such as degumming, heat treatment, and cleaning is relatively high, about more than 30%, and etching equipment, thin film deposition, and other links are also rapidly narrowing the gap with foreign advanced levels, with a localization rate of 20%. Precise countermeasures and supply chain reconstruction have become China's response strategies. China exempts 125% tariffs on eight key semiconductor tax numbers, but maintains high tariffs on memory chips, directly hitting the business of US companies such as Micron and Western Digital in China, while freeing up market space for Yangtze memory and Changshan memory. China also changed the chip origin identification standard from package location to wafer taping location, forcing US companies to adjust their global production capacity layout. For example, TSMC's chips taped in the United States are subject to high tariffs, while those taped in mainland China are tax-free, pushing US companies to transfer mature processes, 28 nanometers and above, to China. Challenges still exist. China still relies on imports in areas such as 5 nanometers per 3 nanometers advanced processes and lithography machines, and the localization rate of process equipment below 28 nanometers is only about 35%. The American Innovation Foundation warned that China is taking advantage of the U.S. free market system to monopolize the market, weaken U.S. companies, and gain influence over key supply chains. China's semiconductor industry is growing in blockade. Demand for automotive chips has surged, with each smart car requiring about 3,000 chips, of which more than 96% use mature processes above 28 nanometers. SMIC is planning to add 25 new 12-inch wafer fabs, focusing on mature processes. At this moment, when chip design software has been cut off, Chinese engineers are still typing code on their keyboards. Domestic EDA tools with 28 nanometer technology are being tested in the laboratory, and the dual work tables of 14 nanometer lithography machines are being fine tuned in the clean room. The US ban may temporarily slow down China's acquisition of the most advanced semiconductors, but it cannot stop the country, which has the world's largest chip market from moving toward technological independence.